Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the SOS RGS. It stands for Router Guide System, and this video is to show you what you'll get in the box when you purchase one of these. Uh, SOS, at some point, I think in 2021, changed their template guide system a little bit, where you used to buy a router guide system for the particular hinge that you are working on, and it would come with all of the apparatus really necessary to prep for that. Um, but it was a bit limiting in the sense that if you needed, you know, if you were doing one hinge, one type of hinge, the router guide system you would get with that would be for that one hinge template, uh, and it would be for either, it would most likely be just for three hinges. Well, what they've done is they've eliminated the particular part numbers for a template uh, for, a, for a template as a tool tied to the hinge part number and what they've done is made it more modular. So you buy an RGS which will give you all the aluminum structure to then attach the templates that you buy separately and you can build your entire template. It will handle up to four hinges right out of the box. Uh, part, we have four preparations. Um, and then you would buy your guide and your router bit. So you now own an RGS, which is these aluminum pieces basically here. You then have all your templates. Let's say you do jobs for two, with 218 hinges, some 220 hinges, some 518s. Well, you can now attach those templates to the revised RGS. And then again, you have your guide and your bit. So it's, it's more flexible in the sense that you don't need multiple RGSs or the aluminum structures um, to do 218s or 220s or 216s or 518s. You need just one, assuming you're going to build that kit every time you do a job. I have a tendency to, if I'm doing one setup all the time, I literally would buy all the parts and I would permanently connect them. Um, so an example of that would be if I know that I'm doing seven foot doors all the time, doors and frames, and I'm always doing them for 218 hinges. I would literally take this template, I would build it, I would secure it. I've even gone so far in the old days as to weld the material together so that the locations can never move, so that I'm always repeatable. For 7 0, I'm always going to do the same hinge locations. You know, for 6 8, yeah, I'd have a different template, quite frankly, uh, for doing 6 8. That's the downside of permanent permanentizing your your RGS built kit but when 90% of everything you do is a 7 foot door or an 8 foot door you know the setup alone isn't really worth your time because at the end of the day the templates on the RGS is not that expensive if you're doing multiple teardowns and setups um, you know you might you might consider that option let's take some dimensional properties of uh, of this uh, a visual tour uh, as well so what you're going to get is uh, four aluminum tracks. These are going to allow you to insert and attach your um, your your 218 IT, your individual template to it. And let's take a uh, little bit of a dimensional review of these aluminum channels. About 23 and a half overall length, width. Looks like it's about 5 eighths height. Looks like it's about half inch, something in that range. You're also going to get two L angles. And um, the initial reaction you might have is, oh, don't I need three L angles? You don't. Um, you'll have four channels, and you'll have two of these L angles. And all of this will allow you to get to a total of four templates on a door. And I'll show you how. Overall length of the L angle, about 12 inch. And it looks like it's about half by half. You'll get a package of screws and fasteners for putting everything together. That's included. You're going to get the installation instructions, and we're going to go over those right now. Uh, but first, let's talk about exactly where you're going to use this material, why you would want this kit, this template. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Now, why you would use this system would be uh, specifically because you want to 
prep for sauce hinges. Okay, makes sense. That's why you're looking at this. Uh, the reason that you would want this, other than doing the obvious, is that it will absolutely help you to not worry about the top of door to the center of each hinge and transposing that data to the jam. It will. This kit will automatically make sure that you're not off in terms of your center line of the door and the jam, assuming the kit hasn't been changed. You know, something came loose or you hit it on the edge of your workbench. Is assuming nothing's changed, it incorporates the ability to put it on the door, nail it down, route, 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 remove it, get it on the jam, nail it down, route, 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 and those center lines are all compatible. It also allows you, obviously, to use a router to mortise for these saw hinges that have a lot of radiuses in them, and you don't need to worry about the size of the preparation. You're not going to take a couple of hole saws and drill at the top and bottom of the prep and then chisel down straight everywhere. The router, the, in my opinion, for doing door work, the two best friends of any person doing that work is going to be your router and a caliper. If you have both of those items, you can prep for basically anything. And some, I suppose, willingness to just solve problems. You have to be able to do that. So it'll give you the right center lines. It's going to give you the right prep so your hinge fits in. And you don't have to worry about, number three, I suppose, is violating what's called the E dimension on the template. Meaning if the hinge is too far away from the face of the door, if it's too deep in, the door is actually not going to... How do I want to do this? The door is actually not going to open correctly. If the hinge is too far in, the center line will force that door to bind. Uh, and this hinge, when you've applied it correctly, the way that you build it, you, you can't install that. You can't mortise it in the wrong location in terms of inset. So you know vertically you're OK. Uh, your y-axis will be good then your z-axis, you, you won't be able to violate that, uh, whatever that is, call it whatever you want. Um, that might be your, your z and that might be your y, so you won't mess that up either. Um, and then of course it allows you to be more uh, flexible. You've got an RGS, you've got a job where you're doing 216s, great. You buy the three or four 216 ITs, and then you have them forever, and that's all there is to it. Uh, so it's really simple and straightforward. So why don't we switch to the screen view and let's go over all the supporting documentation. The installation instructions, yeah, there's four pages here. Honestly, it's, a, it's all bark and no bite. So let's switch to the screen view now. If you've not hit subscribe yet, we would very much appreciate if you did and hopefully you're enjoying this video. Now let's get back to it. Okay, let's take a look at the item that we are working on here. Uh, let's first look at some photographs that we have. Uh, there's the label on the edge of the box. There's the contents. That's everything that you get. Yeah, you're missing parts, but again, it's modular. A different view on these aluminum pieces. Installation instructions. And then your a bag of fasteners and whatnot. So what's going to end up happening is you're going to join the first two pieces of aluminum actually with a template. And then to get your second hinge, you're going to use, uh, well actually your second hinge will come in that intersection. You're going to use one of these L angles to then attach the third to the second. You'll then get your third hinge, and if you need to go to a fourth hinge, you'll add that second L angle, put it at the bottom of your third, attach your fourth bracket, and then to the fourth bracket you'll attach your template. So that's why that's there. Now let's look at the installation instructions. This is what's actually in the package. These instru instructions, they're old. Um, uh, I think the, yeah, so 2015 is when they were published. So this applies to the original router guide system, but nothing's changed in terms of uh, installation instructions. So let's Let's dive into this. Um, I'll, I'm going to touch on those important aspects, and I'm not going to beleaguer those that are obvious. So, extremely important, extremely important that you use this router guide bushing 
and uh, well, this lock nut, you'll need that to attach the bushing to your base, and that you use, uh, and that the router guide bushing has a three quarter inch OD. Um, that is crucial. So they're giving you the ID of the template. The, o the OD of the template is crucial. The 9 sixteenths is important as well. And here's, here's what they're actually telling you. So, oh, that's a bit pixelated. Um, your lock nut is going to hold this component here. Uh, so what they're telling you is that the OD must be three-quarter. Can't be anything but three-quarter. And they're telling you that the distance, I think they called it, nine-sixteenths. That's important as well. You don't want to have something excessively long or too short. Um, this height is what's going to ride in the template. That lock nut will come in here and secure it to your base. Your router bit is going to come right in here. Two flute carbide, well, whatever the bit actually is. Okay. And then, of course, your router base is going to fit in here. That's going to be your router base. Whatever, you get the, you get the plan. The three-quarter is mandatory. If it's not three-quarter, it's not going to fit. Um, and I'll... Well, I'll explain it now. I had a client call me one time, and he bought for me the template, the hinges. He bought from me the router guide system, the RGS. He bought the hinges, the templates, the RGS. That's all he bought. And it turned out that he called and said, hey, these tools are great, but my hinges don't fit. And I went, I, I reviewed what the client ordered. That was all correct for what he was doing. I reviewed what the client was sent. He sent me photographs. That was all correct. And then I said, what guide are you using? He says, well, I'm using a router guide that's three quarter inch diam uh, outside diameter. I said, well, that's great. And I said, what router bit are you using? What diameter of that? And it turns out that the diameter was an eighth of an inch off or a sixteenth of an inch off. And that was yielding him sizes that were very, very marginally too small. I suppose if he had a rubber mallet, he might have been able to hammer the hinges in. But we discovered that he, he was using the wrong diameter bit. He immediately ordered the proper bit from us, the so proper sauce bit, the right size for what he was doing. Went back, had to just skim all of that, those preps once again, and they fit in just perfectly. So that's why you, you need to use the right size guide and the right size um, router bit. And we're going to go over what the right size router bit uh, is as well. So let's continue on with what we are looking at here. Um, to avoid installation of problems, uh, the SOS recommends that you test your setup before you go about prepping all your doors and frames for this material. That's certainly very good advice. If it's the first time you're doing this, yes, absolutely do that. If it's not your first time and you're using the same tools, well, then you're, you've graduated the class. Safety, um, I will leave that to you to read, but eye protection, ear protection, uh, lung protection is equally important in my opinion. Gloves are a good idea. Um, to mount sauce hinges, uh, using the router guide template, you will need the following. Extra long router bits. You will need a plunge router uh, is what you're going to want to use with doing this. See table B. That's on the second page. We're going to go over that in a moment. Uh, template guide bushing and lock nut. We've discussed that at length. Hinge installation template package. Yes, you'll, you'll need these, the wooden templates, for what you're doing. Measuring scale, ruler, or spacing sticks. Sure, some... Some means by which to measure, I imagine. Electric drill or brace. Um, yeah, you're going to need, you will definitely need an electric drill or a brace in a bit. Uh, and the reason you're going to need that is you're going to drill a hole down in the door so that you have somewhere to stick the router bit into before you turn the machine on. Selection of spade bits or wood bits. Yeah, you're going to want 
your tools available. So, figure one references the various components of the hinge router guide template. Become familiar with this terminology as it's going to be used throughout the installation instructions. So this is your template, your nails for attaching the template to the style of the door, your guide pins. The guide pins are going to allow you to prep only for the body of the hinge, and when you remove them, you'll do the plate of the hinge. Okay. Locator pins are super important. Those are going to actually touch what would uh, end up being the pull side of the door, and that automatically defines for you that dimension E that I had mentioned earlier, and I'll show you a template of a sauce hinge. Let's actually just uh, do that now. 218 sauce. Let's show you this dimension E that I've mentioned a number of times. I'll just use any of these hinges. Uh, template. The dimension E, well, they call it dimension E here, but that is this dimension. This is dimension E. One quarter inch, if exceeded, door may not open. Those locator pins automatically give you the proper spacing. It can be a little less, but it can't exceed this, is the bottom line. You know, if you were doing if you were applying, you know, a quarter inch thick material to the face of your door, you might make that back set zero, is what you might consider doing. Um, and then laminating over the top of it. Um, that would certainly not be recommended to do that. Um, but th the point of the matter is, this cannot be exceeded. And they also have jam, uh, pardon me, cased uh, clearance detail is what I'm looking for. And this is a handy document that's on our sauce page, which I'll show you in a moment. What those clearances look like, depending on what you're doing. This would be an example of where they've mortised all the way to the basically the face of the door. So that you can achieve the ability to open the door. And obviously it's right here is where that pinch point is. So when E gets too large, you can now visualize how that pinch point becomes the problem. Okay. So that is the E dimension. Don't exceed that. Those locator pins obviously handle that for us. Locator pin. That's the side view of what your preparation is going to look like. Uh, the first mortise I call the plate. This, uh, the second mortise that's down in here, second mortise, I call that the body. That's the hole you'll have to drill to get the router bit down into. Recommended spacing of sauce invisible hinges. They do uh, intend for you to soldier stack the top two, as shown here. You're going to want to make sure with your door manufacturer that that does not violate any warranty concerns, because the manufacturer very likely has well established and published guidelines in terms of where they want the hanging devices. Um, you don't want to prep it in this fashion to find out that your doors have warped by no fault of your own and the manufacturer won't honor a warranty claim because of how it was hung. I've never heard of it happening with sauce, but I've most absolutely heard of it happening uh, with unapproved hanging methods. Notice that the center hinge is not shown in the usual location near the middle of the door. The center hinge should be located one half of the distance from the center of the door to the center of the top hinge. So they're balancing that. Top hinge, center of the door, put it right in the middle between the two. This is to fortify the door against extra leverage extended on the top hinge. Another way of thinking of that is I've been told that 70% of the weight of the door is actually held by that top hinge. This is allowing you to spread that load between two hinges and in fact I would argue that it is the wiser way to do it and certainly when you leave the United States you'll see it very often or at least North America you'll see hinges biased towards the top. If you're on a cruise, you might be making ports of call in the United States, but if you see doors with those top two hinges, that's because that bolt was built in Europe or somewhere that follows this sort of convention. Uh, very typical. On applications requiring more than four sauce hinges, a good rule of thumb is to place more invisible hinges in the upper half. Let's go back to our hinge. Underneath here is, yeah, hinge location. It's right there. So this is a guideline that will show you that. 
the manufacturer's page here, actually on the item that we're working on, manufacturer's page here, um, it will have that document, hinge location. It's right here. Encyclopedic documents here are, are for your review as well. That's where a lot of this is coming from. So gives you a guideline in terms of where they'd like to see you install the material. All right. So we've gone over where to place the hinges and you know where to find that document. Let's move on to page two. Figure three illustrates a typical door jam where sauce hinges will be mounted. Become familiar with the terminology as it will be used throughout these instructions. The jam preparation um, Yeah, okay, so, yeah, they want you to do the jam first. I, at this time, don't see a problem with doing that. Remove the guide pins. Um, I don't do that. I don't remove, the guide pins are here. The, basically, they're drywall screws. I don't do that. I, the reason I don't is because I want to prep the body first. I want to do that step first. So I leave the guide pins in. The reason is, is should I make any type of mistake, I at least have the plate prep that may remove all evidence of a prior mistake. So I like to do the body preps or the deep preps first and then the finished plate preps afterwards. So I would, I would keep the guide pins in. Uh, going along with their instructions, place the router guide template on the hinge jam so the locator pins rest flush against the pull side jam face and are on the inside of the intended door swing. Um, place the router guide template on the hinge jam so the locator pins rest flush against the pull side of the jam. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. And are inside, oh, okay, that makes sense. So what they're saying is you're going to, these, the locator pins that are here you're going to push them up to the face of the jam without any casing, the jam itself. And, and these pins need to be on the facing the inside, this, this area of the opening. Um, I guess what they're saying is, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what they're saying. How, how would, I'm not sure how you would get that wrong. Um, I, I'm not sure. I'd have to think about how you would get that wrong. The spacer tab should be flush against the head jam and positioned in line with the template. So what they're saying is, right here, one of the templates is going to have the spacer... Um, actually, they'll all have the spacer tab. You want to fold that back and butt the template, meaning butt the spacer tab, to the underside of the header. That will give you that eighth of an inch margin that you need. You're going to butt it right up to the underside of the header. Just like it actually, just like it's shown here. Right there. Once the desired position is established, the nails can be tapped into the door rabbit to secure the template. Once you're ready to go and you know everything is placed exactly where you want it, you go ahead and set these nails into your jam. And that will hold the template in place. Uh, now, refer to table A to obtain the proper drill size for the spade bit and starter hole. So, what they're saying is, depending on the hinge that you're using, let's just say it's a 218, you're going to drill a half inch hole, 1 in 23, 30 seconds deep. I don't know that I necessarily agree or disagree with the starter hole depth. Um, I don't know that ultimately it matters, but was but what does matter is that you don't over drill the door for depth and you don't under drill it. Your plunge router is going to need to have a stop on it. It will have a stop when you know that you've hit your maximum depth on your um, for your body prep. So depending on the hinge, that's your drill size and your depth. The depth of the starter hole should be at least the values listed. Depth exceeding those tabulated will not adversely affect hinge operation. Well, I don't disagree with that, but you don't want to drill any deeper than necessary. If it's a fire-rated door, um, which you would not be prepping in the field uh, unless you were authorized to do so, um, the way the door was tested 
would be according to the template and the installation instructions. So there's no need to drill it any deeper than necessary. Um, okay, so step five, being careful not to nick or gouge the template, super crucial. These templates are made of poplar. When you have the router sitting in the template, make sure it comes to a complete stop before you remove it, complete stop. Drill the starter hole in the router, uh, dr pardon me, drill the starter hole for the router to the proper depth in the center of the hinge outline. The question is, is how do you know what the proper depth is? You can do that two ways. Uh, you can use a caliper, which I had mentioned earlier, is your second best friend, or you can measure on your drill bit and then put a piece of masking tape on the uh, circumference of the drill bit so you know when to stop. It's not a critical dimension. Um, in the center of the hinge outline. So drill that right, right in the center is what they're staying, saying there. Routing the hinge outline. The chart in table B lists the maximum depths to which a hinge, which the hinge outline should be routed. It is advisable to check the depth of the cut you are making prior to removing a significant amount of wood. If desired, the required depth may be obtained by making multiple router passes. You're absolutely going to make multiple router passes. Unless what you're routing is an eighth inch or three sixteenths at one time, I have never ever been able to route a substantial amount of wood at once unless it was a massive machine, a CNC machine held in, meaning your work has been fixtured and clamped down. You're never going to try to use a plunge router and make it in one run. I've had people call me and say, hey, that, that doesn't seem to work. And I say, yeah, it, it because it doesn't. You don't want to do that. Um, so now what they're giving us is the recommended bit. So for our fictional 218, we know the guide that we're going to use because it was listed up in the top of uh, page one, the part number. But now the router, the bit itself, the 51 310. Here it is. That's the recommended bit for doing the 218. Listed here. We're using the 218 IT. So you'll be able to pick that up and order that as well. Using whatever means a measurement best suited to you, determine the location of the next hinge to be mounted on the jam. Mark or measure that distance so as to not damage the door. So now what you're doing is You've drilled the hole, you have routed the body or the plate, whichever you've done first, you've removed or you've added the guide pins, and then you've done the second prep. I prefer to do this one first. The, the instructions say, uh, do this one first, then this one. I have not been able to find a, um, amount of guidance in terms of what actually makes more sense, in terms of what to do and how to do it. A, B. Um, so we, we moved really quick through that. So the bottom line is you now know what diameter of bit you need. You know that you've got to prep based on the template in terms of depth. Uh, this template, well, you, well, I'm pointing it out to you now, what, what sort of dimension you have to have, you know, depth, length, and you can look at the template and do a reality check against the hinge that you are prepping for. But at the end of the day you get the template attached to the jam you do the body and the plate prep in any order that you want after you've drilled the starter hole for the router bit you're gonna make multiple passes there's no doubt you know the diameter of the bit as I just said you're gonna set the location of the second third and fourth hinge or more if that's what you want you don't have to actually connect all of them together you could just simply buy one template nail it onto the door and do it you don't need an RGS you can do them one at a time the problem with one at a time is, well, the good thing about one at a time is you're not going to buy multiple templates if you're literally doing one installation. The problem with one at a time is, of course, the possibility you'll do more than one job with these hinges. And then, of course, the other problem would be getting the centers wrong. Um, but using this template, the only thing that, if you're going to do it one hinge at a time, the only thing you must absolutely be sure of is that let's say you go top of the door to the center of that first hinge to be eight and a half inch that you absolutely have that center line of the template at eight and five eighths on the jam okay you're definitely going to need that all right let's continue on uh, with our overview 
So you'll make up the uh, additional locations and prep, you know, repeat the process. Remember the distances you have selected as you'll need to recall those measurements when mounting the templates on the door. Um, if you're setting the template in the RGS, you won't need to recall those because assuming the template doesn't move, you'll just transpose it from the jam to the door. You'll hang the spacer tab over the edge of the door. You'll hook it to the top of the door and then you've adjusted for that eighth of an inch. Remove the template from the jam and move it to the new location you have chosen, repeating steps two through seven. Okay, so they're saying you're going one at a time is what this is being written as. Door preparation. Prior to mounting the template on the door, make certain the door is properly oriented, meaning the top is the top. You know, however you end up doing that. Generally, when you prep for hardware, you do the hinges first. If it's a left-hand door, the top of the door should be on your left and you're measuring from the left. If it's a beveled edge door, the high side of the door will be facing you always, almost always. The clearance between the head jam and the door is set with the spacer tab. It should be positioned one quarter turn so the template will hang from the top of the door. That's what that is. Okay, so place the router guide template on the door so the locator pin rests flush against the pull side face of the door. Same side of the opening as when you applied it to the jam and are on the inside of the desired direction of the door swing. Yeah, sure. The pins will face towards the center of the opening or the opposite jam, not away from both jams. Once the desired position is established, the nails can be tapped in to secure the template in place. Again, being careful not to nick or gouge the template, drill the starter hole for the router. Depth table uh, depth listed in table A, center of the hinge is what you'll need to do. The chart in table B lists the maximum depths. We've gone over that. Recalling the measurements you made to determine the hinge spacing on the jam. Use those identical measurements to position the template for the next hinge, etc. Again, assuming you're doing them one at a time. Remove the template from the door and simply repeat. Now, completion of the jam mortises. What they've had you do is take a template and do the frame for the plate and then do the door for the plate. Now what they'll be telling you to do is to um, put the template back onto the jam uh, and to basically reinstall the guide pins and then mortise for those guide pins uh, mortise for the bodies so starting at the top hinge position the template so the nails fit into the nail nail holes left in the jam from the previous route the locator pins should be toward the inside of the door swing as before once the proper position is re-established the nails can be tapped in to secure it to complete the routing of the hinge mortise it will be necessary to remove wood to the depth listed in table C. It is recommended that multiple passes uh, be accomplished. So table C is here. So now they're, they want you to do the body prep. I personally would do all of the jam at one time, remove, reinstall the guide pins, and then do the door all at one time is how I would personally do it. Um, I don't really want to remove the template and then nail it back into the old holes. That, that It's not going to hold as well, especially when you're routing quite deeply uh, at that point. Quite deeply, in fact. After the deep mortise is routed, remove the template, place the sauce hinge into the mortise you have completed, and inspect the following. Does it fit snugly? Does any portion of the hinge extend beyond the rabbit of the jam? The body of the hinge should fit snugly into the mortise, and if the hinge body extends above the jam after the hinge has been pushed into the mortise as far as possible, verify that the mortises have been routed to the proper depths. Correct. Make any corrections that you need. Position the template at the next location and repeat. Same process with the door. Position the template so it nails the nails fit into the holes left in the door from the previous route. The locator pin should be the inside of the door swing as before. Again, towards the center of the opening. Once the proper position is re-established, the nails can be tapped in to secure the template in place. 
Com to complete the routing of the hinge mortise, it will be necessary to remove wood from the door to the depths listed in C. Again, it is recommended that the wood be removed by making multiple passes with your router. After the deep mortise has been routed, remove the template from the door and position it at the next location on the door. Super simple. Repeat those steps. Bonding the door to the hinge, that's going to be easy. You're going to mark your holes, you're going to pre-drill the holes for the screws, and you're going to attach. Having completed the routing of the hinge mortises, notice that the hinge mortise is not centered within the thickness of the door. It never will be. The thin section corresponds to the inside face of the door. I don't know about that, but the E dimension is the pull side. If you've made it this far into this video, you must be determined to see it through to the end, and we appreciate your hanging in there with us and watching this entire video. It means a lot. It takes a lot of work to create these videos in the sense that, um, you know, it's time taken away from doing other things. However, the advantage for me personally of creating these videos is the fact that it does allow myself to either learn about something new, to uh, reacquaint myself with something, or to reinforce what I believe that I already know. Any comments that you might leave down below would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. And again, that's why that's so important to observe, um, that you don't violate that E-dimension size. Um, place the saw's hinges into the mortises so the hinge body straddle the thin section of the door. Using wood screws supplied with the hinges, secure the hinges to the door. Uh, Pre-drill the holes first. The door can then be moved into a position where the remaining hinge bodies can be placed into their respective mortises in the jam. Secure the jam side with the remaining wood screws. Pre-drill those holes first. Exercise the door to see that it opens and closes freely throughout the required amount of opening, meaning swing the door. Place the routed side of the wood router guide. Refer to the illustration below. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay, so now these are the instructions on actually the router guide system. And, you know, the picture's worth a thousand words. Your first template, you've got the tooth washer and the screw. That's going to go into the template itself. The little angle that you have is going to attach, it's going to join the two U-channels that are here. Um, actually, no, that's going to happen down here. Forgive me. The, the next template is going to join the two U-sections together. Then the angle bracket and the wing, uh, the wing nuts that are here. And then you'll repeat that if you have a fourth hinge down here. So, assembly is really simple and straightforward. Place the routed side of the wood guide. Place the routed side of the wood router guide, refer to the illustration below, into a slotted aluminum channel. Slide the guide to the end of the channel so that the wood is flush with the aluminum, like they're showing right here. And they're saying the routed end of the wood template on those 218 ITs, or whatever you're dealing with, it actually looks like this. It's routed here, and then your aluminum channel fits like that. You get the picture. screws will go in there like that. So those templates are actually routed like that. That's the only way, and what will end up happening is the aluminum will sit flush to the face of that template. Um, let's see. Okay, this is an older version that's not routed. This is the pre-RGS model. It'll be routed moving forward. This is an older version of it, the, the, the original version. All right.
place small tooth washer on wood screw, slip screw into the slot in the channel, and screw it into the wood hole closest to the flush end. A, B, supply. Turn the spacer tab on the flush end of the guide one quarter turn, meaning tuck it back. Uh, pardon me, don't tuck it back. You can hang it down so that you can kind of hook that to the top of the door. Put the screws and washers into any two remaining router guide holes and tighten. Slide a second router guide into the other end of the above channel guide assembly. Slide the guide about two inches into the channel. Place a washer in the wood screw. Slip the screw through the slot into the channel. Turn it into the hole in the wood. Do not tighten. You don't tighten it because you're going to need to shift it to meet the height requirement that you want. Place another channel on the guide and insert two washers and screws as before. Do not tighten. Um, turn a machine screw into each tapped hole in the angle rail so that the screw head is inside the rail's corner. So, um, you're going to have some machines, some pan head or I should say round head machine screws are going to fit inside of the rail uh, in such a way that they're not going to interfere with anything. So you're literally duplicating what's here. That's the machine screw they're, they're referring to. Place the angle rail into the cha end, cha end of the channel so one screw extends into the slot in the channel and the angle extends six inches. So, you know, you're assembling this is what it is. and then repeat the process. Put nails into the holes in each end of the guide. Yeah, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna get all the nails for the templates nailed to the edge of the door, and then once that's done, you will then tighten everything down, all of the wood screws and the wing nuts. And that will then allow you to fix the template together in terms of a center to center relationship of the hinges, of the hinge locations. Slide each uh, router guide into the desired location and tighten all loose screws. See, in, see attached instructions for mounting saws, invisible hinges using the hinge template guide. Okay, we've gone over that. Partially drive the nails into the door, only far enough to secure the location of each router guide. Don't nail them all the way down, just enough to hold the template onto the door. Hardwood edge doors are going to react differently than softwood edge doors, obviously. And then step 17 goes through the routing of the mortise. The pins will come out, the pins will go back in, do the body prep, do the plate prep. After the routing of the door is done, pull the nails out so you can lift the entire unit off the edge of the door, rotate the spacer back so that it's flush with the edge of the template, place the entire unit in the hinge jam as we talked about before, the guide pins towards the pull side of the door facing towards the center or the strike jam of the opening, push all that up to the underside of the header, drive the nails into the jam, and then route the mortises. Simple and straightforward is what that is. Um, back to the manufacturer's page. Neither of these are good. Sauce RGS. So that link here, on the manufacturer's page, you'll not only be able to review all of the sauce items that we sell by means of that horizontal navigation, also a link to the manufacturer's website here, the most current product catalog, and that's handy because you'll be able to see A section where they're showing you the router guide templates and template system. Okay, this is an older catalog. This is when you had to buy the entire assembly, either in a three-piece or a four-piece, for a 212, 216, 218, or 220. This is all the old stuff. The new stuff requires that you buy again the RGS, and then your 212 IT, your 216, 218, 220 IT, or the 518 IT. By the time you're seeing this video, we'll have all this data added um, 
to the site, but you can also do these fire rated versions, the 416 and 418. Actually, I had mentioned the 518 previously, and I'm now questioning where I got that information from, because I don't see the 518 listed. Sauce. Yeah, that's a wide throw. I don't, I don't see why that would be a problem to use the 518. Um, let's take a look at something. What I've pulled up here is the price list and for the router guide and Sauce Invis Invisible Hinge router guide template. Um, they, do, they do list the 518 IT. Uh, so I would have to imagine that it's compatible with the RGS. I couldn't see how that one wouldn't be. Yeah, so I would imagine that that is indeed agreeable for that. Um, saves you time and measurements. The router guide templates can be positioned exactly to the hinge locations desired and then locked into place. The system can be moved from door to door jam, thereby eliminating time consuming measurements. And that's really where the potential for error comes in. Um, yeah, so back on that manufacturer's page, other links are here, older versions of the product catalog, instructions for preparing an opening for a sauce invisible hinge, etc. The only, the only other documents I'd like to point out to you are these three that are called nomograph. And this is basically how you go about determining how many hinges you need based on the width, the weight, and the uh, thickness of the door. So if we're going to use this tool, two sixteen, two eighteen, two twenty door thickness. Let's say inch and three quarter as a minimum. You've got a thirty six inch door that's two hundred that's one hundred and fifty pounds. Connect that up, run it all the way up, and then go straight across. And you can see for an inch and three quarter thick door, yeah, I mean, without using a ruler or a straight edge, yeah, you're going to need four of those 218s. That's the standard sauce material. They also have the Hercules version, which is a substantially heavier gauge, uh, a product rated for far heavier material. So that same three foot door that's 200, that's 150 pounds, there's you, you would never, you, you know, you, you would never use that. I mean, if the chart does, the chart starts at 198 pounds. So let's say you had a 300, uh, a, thir a three foot wide door that was, say, 500 pounds. Come down, basically to here, go straight across. You're going to use either five of the 220 H's or, uh, pardon me, four of the 220 H's or five of the 218 H's. And then, of course, again, the thickness of the door will have to be important. The 218 is for a minimum thickness of inch and three quarter. The 220 is for a two inch thick door. You can see that this tops out at practically 1,100 pounds. So a 3.0 door that's 1,100 pounds, they can do it easily. A lot of hinges, but they can do it. The width is what's most important. The height. Not so much. It's the width. It's the additional um, force that you're applying to those top hinges. So those nomographs are really great. There's also the wide throw nomograph that's here. Again, a different, a different uh, set of variables that are here, but the same layout. Let's wrap up this video on camera. Regarding the links to ads that you might see in this video, we do apologize for any interruption to a smooth viewing experience and hopefully the ads that are being presented to you are related to the base product and if there is something feel free to click on those and perhaps consider taking a look at what that other advertiser is promoting let's get back to the video okay well certainly someday we're going to add a video actually demonstrating how to use this uh, it will be built at some point made up and, uh, and added to the site so all of these piece parts are here uh, hopefully that gives you an understanding of how to approach 
putting together a system like this. I can tell you from uh, my experience, customers opt for this. Um, the reason is, is because I think sauce hinges are intimidating to people in terms of mortising, and they really shouldn't be because when you look at the template, how, how tall is it for both the plate and the body? How wide is it for both the plate and the body? Then how deep is each? If you're using the template, you can't violate the E dimension for inset or backset of the hinge. You have to measure the center line, and if you're using an RGS system and you set the template up, you don't even have to, you don't have to measure that but once. So it really makes it super simple. I've had people do one door opening, just one. They ordered the hinges, they ordered the bit, the guide, they ordered the templates and the RGS. Um, again, you can do it with a, with a spade bit and a hammer and a chisel. The problem with doing that is you're never gonna get the fit and finish as you would with a router. At least I couldn't, uh, is the bottom line. So the downside of sauce hinges and the approach of buying all the tools, you're adding all the money to do the preparation. But hopefully you understand through this video, it's really not technically difficult. Um, rather than there being a hinge prep, like for a regular butt hinge, you just have to run the mortise to two different preparations. It's that simple. You still have to get the height right. You still have to get the back set right. Um, but the majority of people who will buy this will buy the hinges and all the, the tooling and the template. And they're doing half a dozen doors or 20 doors. Or they're buying two kits because they're going to employ two people and get it all done in one day. Or it's a shop setting and they know they're going to use it over and over again is the bottom line. Um, I could certainly understand ordering the hinges and just one template if you're doing one opening. Uh, you have to decide if that extra time is worth the net additional cost. The total amount of additional time doing it one hinge at a time on the door, then one hinge at a time on the frame. Is it worth what you'll have to spend to lower the amount of work to do that? Um, you know, if it was Probably if it was me and I was going to do one and literally never do it again, I probably would just order the template if it was me. But if I knew I was going to do more than one opening, I would definitely buy the buy the uh, entire kit. Uh, the router bit you can use again. It, you know, depending on the hinge, it's going to be a common size. The template is not very expensive. The RGS is really not that expensive. But you do have to buy the number of templates based on how many hinge preps you're going to do. Two, three, or four, probably three. Three or more, uh, very likely. Uh, the name sauce is synonymous with concealed hinges, and there are a lot of other people who put into the marketplace concealed hinges. Lots of people, in fact. But only sauce is the manufacturer of one that isn't adjustable in a, a X, a Y, and a Z, pardon me, a Z, a Y, and an X axis, I think is how they all call that. Those hinges are generally three times the cost, if not more, of a sauce hinge. Twice, three times or more the cost, for sure, every single time. My argument is we've broken down how to prep the door for sauce. The hinge is never going to move. The inner, the fulcrum plates that are together, they're not going to move ever. They're not going to break, fatigue, or fail ever. In 32 years, yeah, almost 32. Oh, gosh. My anniversary is next week. It'll be 32 years next week. There was one time a client called me and said the, hint, the sauce hinge broke. Turns out it was a bookcase way under specified. The hinge was way too small for the application. Two children climbed up the bookcase and sat on top of it. And they literally took that sauce hinge and deformed all the plates. They just bent all of them. The hinge still actually kind of operated a little bit. That was the only time a customer said to me the, the sauce hinge failed. I says failed. I've never heard of such a thing. Because these hinges don't fatigue and fail, because they don't sag, I've never heard of one sagging, I just don't understand why you need the ability to adjust in those three axes. I don't understand it. Um, anyway, you have to decide. Um, the people over at Sauce are very handy, very helpful. Every time I call there, I have a technical question. Generally, the person who answers it can answer my question. And if they can't, they send me to someone else, and I always get the answer. Uh, and uh, it's, I'm very grateful to distribute their product because I really 
uh, appreciate the brilliance of the hinge. One thing about sauce or concealed hinges in general, be mindful. It's going to change your relationship of hardware on the opening when you're using a sauce hinge. What comes to mind is where you template overhead uh, stops and friction and holders. You have to, when you order that material, like a Glenn Johnson you know, 900 series, 100 series, ABH 1000 series, whatever, all, you know, uh, Rickson's different series. You have to specify those overhead stops or holders based on the hanging device. The template may change based on the fact that when you open that sauce hinge, the vertical axis of pivoting is not a static vertical plumb line. It actually floats through the opening. So the factory, when they are creating the overhead stop or holder, the hardware is the same, but when they're creating the template where to place it from the heel edge of the door, the hinge edge of the door, over, is going to be based on that method of mounting. I've had orders where I've placed for that material when the job was sauce. There was absolutely an impact on the cost. The paperwork was different. I've also had applications where the client, where we sold overhead stops and they called and said, hey, I'm using concealed hinges. Uh, is the templating okay? I call the factory and say, here's what we have. You're okay. That template is okay to use for that application. Or here's an adjustment to make. So declare it at that time because there is a review at the factory for compatibility and compliance of what the hardware that what the hanging hardware is along with what you're doing on the opening uh, in terms of these other pieces of hardware uh, and overhead concealed surface mount all this overhead material uh, is impacted by that anyway if you have any questions on the sauce rgs or any other sauce product please feel free to reach out to us and thank you again thank you for watching and if you've enjoyed this video please click thumbs up Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you. Thanks to our clients, Architectural Builder Supply is building an additional facility. And what follows is not only a look at the acreage that we're building the facility on, but also first, the architectural renderings as they exist, or at least the architectural plans as they, as they exist at this time. Thank you very much. Let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at the architecturals as they exist at this moment, or at least it wouldn't be proper to call these architecturals, but it would be proper to call them renderings in the sense of they're conceptual drawings, they're not renderings. So the entire space is going to look like this in terms of a site rendering. This will be a 22,000 square foot building of which will have specific purpose areas will be a workshop down here. This is a few thousand square feet that will be uh, likely woodworking, metalworking, CNC, things of that nature. This will be an office area here, a private office area. This will be architectural builders supply uh, expanded storage area where, where we will be able to do fulfillment. The entire space in the center is going to be all of the volume, as I call it, uh, large Components will be able to store, be stored and stocked there. Machinery that's too large to fit otherwise may be put out here. Specific facility rooms, and then some recreation over here. Let's take a look at that drone footage, and take, thank you very much for taking a look.